Okay, so in this video we're going to keep talking about conservation of momentum, but we're going to focus on something called an explosion. So an explosion where the particles of the system move apart from one another after a brief intense interaction is the opposite of a collision, right? So when we talk about collisions, we have objects coming at each other, right? Right. So this is before, you got object A, object B. Afterwards, A, you know, moves on, B moves on, okay? Or if it's inelastic, right? After the collision, they stick together and they go off at one giant mass. And so an explosion is the opposite. So they're going to, the object's going to start together, right? Typically, they're going to be not moving, okay? Um, and so uh, you, you, this could be like two lab carts with a spring between them, and then you let the spring go, and then afterwards what happens is one object will go one direction, the other object goes the other direction, okay? So what happens is um, typically the initial velocity of the system will be zero, which makes the initial momentum zero. And then we know that uh, A would have a negative velocity, and B would have a positive velocity because we always, you know, make the assumption that positive is going to point to the right. Um, and so um, the explosive forces which could um, could perform an expanding, could be from an expanding spring or expanding hot gases, right? These are conservative forces, right? So again, they're not going to bring in, you know, we're going to make these assumptions that our system is going to be isolated. Um, now, so if the system is isolated, the total momentum during the explosion, um, excuse me, the total momentum uh, during the explosion will be constant. Okay, or it'll be conserved. However, the kinetic energy will not be conserved. So it's kind of like an inelastic collision because remember it's the the reverse of that. So um, before or the, the the momentum will always be conserved. That's a true of of explosions or collisions. Uh, but then afterwards, in the explosive type scenario, it's not kinetic energy is not conserved. Now, what generally what happens in most cases, the total momentum before the explosion will be equal to zero, and that's because the objects are not moving. But you may find some random case um, where the they're in or on a moving vehicle, and, and what happens is they'll share an initial or a common initial velocity. Okay, so typically before the explosion your total momentum will be zero which means that's what your total momentum after has to be but you may find some random case where you know the objects right are on like let's say a moving truck and something happens right but they're going to share a common initial velocity in this scenario here with the truck right whatever the truck's traveling at and then you can do your calculations from there all right. A lot of times what you'll see with these questions, it'll be like a gun. Uh, this is the recoil velocity or speed of a rifle. Um, you may see something with a submarine uh, and a torpedo. Um, it could be two ice skaters pushing off of each other. You know, something like that where the two objects will start together and then move off in opposite directions afterwards. Okay, But the equation actually works out to be essentially the same thing every time. Okay, So here's an example where we have a 10 gram bullet fired from a three kilogram rifle with a speed of 500 meters per second. What is the recoil speed of the rifle? Okay, so this is an explosive scenario, right? So before we pull the trigger, the bullet and the rifle are sitting, right? Let me put it, let's put it this way. Let me erase my little picture here, right? And so So essentially what happens is, here's my rifle muzzle, 
here's my bullet, right? So before nothing's moving, we pull the trigger, right? And what happens? Right, the rifle kicks back and then the bullet comes out moving at 500 meters per second. Okay, so initially the common initial velocity would be zero. Okay, and so here right, we have the mass of the bullet is going to be 10 grams or 0 0.010 kilograms. And we do have to convert that because the, the rifle is in kilograms. Right? And so we want to know what is the velocity of the rifle afterwards. Right? And so if we set up our equation, it's like we're saying mass of the bullet plus mass of the rifle times our common initial velocity is going to equal the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet plus the mass of the rifle times the velocity of the rifle. Right? And this is uh, the MBVB plus MRVR is our after side. And so what happens is um, this side goes away because this value is zero. So I'm going to say zero equals MBVB plus MRVR. And I'm going to solve this equation for VR. And so really what happens is, okay, uh, really what happens, let me get rid of these stray red marker pieces here, okay. Um, Anytime you have an explosion type question, your equation is basically going to be something that looks like this, okay? Um, and this is to assume that the bullet's going to go off in our positive direction, okay? And so what we do is we just simply plug in negative mass of the bullet times the speed of the bullet divided by uh, the mass of the rifle, which is three kilograms, okay? And so we plug that into our calculator, we get. 0 0.01 times 500 divided by 3 and find that you get a velocity right of 1.67 of excuse me negative 1.67 right so that would be the recoil velocity of the of the um, the rifle okay so it's going to kick back and if you've ever shot a rifle or, or seen it, like a cannon go off you do see that they do kick back, right? And this is one of the reasons why cannons actually have wheels because it was very dangerous. If they didn't have the wheel, they needed that energy to go somewhere. The cannon would literally like lift up and fall back on the cannoneers. So what the wheels did was they, they took that energy, this, you know, this recoil energy, if you want to say, and actually kind of dissipated it through traveling backwards okay um, and that's the and again that's the reason why the can, like cannons even today if you look at howitzers in the military they still have wheels on them once for transport but the way they do it now is that the whole barrel of the cannon actually kicks back not not necessarily um, you know because it's it's able to do that it's like on a spring system okay so now in the next video we're going to look at two-dimensional collisions um, it is something probably new to AP Physics C students, so uh, we were gonna we'll look at that very carefully.